In this video, we are going to show you an ancient Chinese secret that we apply when we wish to very accurately time our script execution in both JavaScript and ActionScript 3.0 for Flash. Now this, like many of our other lessons, shows how JavaScript and ActionScript 3.0 have very much the same syntax for many of their core classes and functions. So let's get our hands dirty, shall we? First, let's take a look at a real-world example of an application that shows how many milliseconds that a process has taken the server. So for instance, if you go to World of Webcraft, which I have up and running again, and I really don't want a whole lot of people there making a mess and a muck and running a muck and going crazy there, so don't even bother to join unless you really have to ask something, sir. Only if you really need to join, join. Otherwise, I'd rather there just be 20 members. Well, there's like 40 now, but I only want 40. 50 maybe, max. Jesus Christ. But anyhow, if you come to the world of Webcraft and you click the Site Analyzer tool right there, and you can clip any domain you want in there, for instance, World of Webcraft itself, click Analyze, and right up here you're going to see numbers that show up after the analyzation process has taken place and the server calls have been done. Now watch. So it's analyzing now. And you can see it says Domain Validation took 0.421 seconds and domain analyzation took 2.592 seconds. So you can show your users or yourself as the programmer if you want to just for testing purposes just to see how fast your server side calls run or how fast your PHP script is going to get data back to you. You can do that sort of thing with the code I'm about to show you. And you can do it for both JavaScript. Mine on this page here happens to be JavaScript based but you can do it with uh, P, uh, PHP and Flash if you're working with ActionScript 3.0 and PHP server calls or if, even if you're loading in external images you can use this sort of code. Okay, first of all essentially it's only two lines of code that make the whole thing happen so nobody should get freaked out about whoa that's really complicated it's not it's two lines of code okay and then after we get done uh, assembling the code in JavaScript to show you a demonstration in JavaScript we're gonna put the same code that we assemble in JavaScript in the Flash ActionScript 3.0 and run it and I'm going to show you how it works because JavaScript and ActionScript 3.0 are so very similar in their syntax in their methods in their classes. Okay, let's say in JavaScript you have a function and it's called any function and it really could be any function that you have in JavaScript any one that you want to test in time and you'll notice that a lot of code really takes zero milliseconds or maybe it's like 0 .002, 0 0.003 milliseconds to run if you're not making external external server calls to a PHP script or getting files like image files or media files from the server. Now, let's put in a little line of code outside of any function right there and let's make any function run. So this line of code will make any function above right here. Whatever code that's in it, it'll make it execute. Actually, before we put that line in to execute the function, let's put an alert in here. and Let's just say hi. So if I run this right now, nothing will happen because there's no code telling that function to run so that's why we put this line in here it will make that function execute just for demonstration purposes so now let's run it and we'll get the alert that says hi you see alright that's great so now we can see we have an effective function setup that runs now what you do in the top of your function is you'll start a new variable and you can name it ms for short and it stands for milliseconds and that's going to be equal to new date object and then we're going to access one of the methods of the date object called get time. And what get time does is it will give you a number that's a representation. It'll look something like this. It'll be like just a jumbled bunch of numbers that'll be a representation of how many milliseconds have passed since January 1st, 1969 or something like that. Some 40-year-old date. So let's just go in right here and leave ourselves a comment. Here, I'll just go to develop PHP and, and in the JavaScript section I have a little bit of information on the date object and all of its methods. So you can check that out if you want. It's at the if you're a develop PHP homepage, you click JavaScript and I'm still working on the JavaScript section. But you can go to the objects down here, the date object, and read about the date object. Check out its uh methods and properties. Okay, let's go back to our script and here let's see instead of writing that let's just put in this line there so get time uh, what it does is you use get time on the date object and it returns local total milliseconds for the date object 
referenced from January 1st, 1970. So from January 1st, 1970, so whenever you run this line of code, you're going to get the total milliseconds back between those two dates. Now, all you have to do, actually, you can copy that line, and you put a comment in here and say, you know, run heavy JavaScript or server Ajax calls to PHP. So you run heavy JavaScript or server Ajax calls to PHP here, and then after those processes are complete, you put another variable here and you can call this one uh, just for short exec time which is short for execution time so now what that's done is you've created a variable that holds the milliseconds since January 1st 1970 after your script gets done running so after the PHP script and everything gets done processing that's when you're creating this variable here so what you're doing is you're creating a variable that holds how many milliseconds have passed since 1970 when your script begins. Then when your script runs at the bottom of it, you access make a new variable that holds how many milliseconds have passed since 1970 when your script ends. And that will give you how many milliseconds have passed between when your script first begins to when it ends. Now there's a little bit of math you have to do to this. You have to minus the MS you minus the milliseconds from when the script first began that'll give you the difference that you're looking for and really that's the variable the amount that you want is the difference of milliseconds between when the script started and when it ends now this variable exec time if you were to output that here that's going to give you how many milliseconds if you want to turn this to seconds uh, for instance on this application at the world of webcraft the site analyzer when I analyze something, it shows me uh, the amount of seconds with a decimal. So it's not showing the user 1899 milliseconds. It's showing the user one second and a fraction of the next second that was about to be complete, but it never did because the script finished. So it's 1.899 seconds. And that's a better representation. To get that representation of your script execution time, simply wrap these in parentheses this whole thing the new date object and then you divide that whole equation that we just grouped by a thousand and that'll give you the seconds point whatever and you have the logic now all you have to do is when your script begins you gather the milliseconds that have passed since January 1st 1970 by accessing the date object and its get time method then when your script ends you pretty much do the same thing but you just subtract the milliseconds that were from when the script started and then you divide the whole thing by a thousand to make it uh, represented in seconds show the user or show yourself how many seconds with a decimal it's just a little bit of math and accessing the date objects uh, get time method it's very simple and it's only really just two lines of code so here's the logic you start your script this is the first line in your script then this should be near the end of your script now if you have something like an Ajax call, let's go to develop PHP again and let's look at this Ajax example in the video tutorials here. Where is it? Right there. Ajax post to PHP file. Now in this code you can see we have an Ajax mechanism set up. You see here and it's the same thing with jQuery. What you want to do is put your uh, script ending time little line of code within this if HR ready state equals 4 and HR status equals 200 this is where you put it because your script is complete at that point for your Ajax call so you put your first line up here for the MS variable then your exec time variable goes down here and that will effectively tell you how much time it took for that PHP script to run or whatever process your server is doing now if I run this since my application has no code I'm gonna get a zero see it alerted me a zero because that's JavaScript's just that fast. You might get a point zero zero one or a point zero zero two on occasion if you run a script that's as bare as this. But you really want to have a lot of code or you want to have an Ajax call. Really it's best for timing Ajax calls. Anything where you're communicating with the server, because if it's just code right here in JavaScript, it's gonna run within a split second so fast there's no reason to time it. Now let's open Flash and I'm going to show you the exact same code. Actually let me just go ahead 
copy it into my clipboard right now, Control C, and I'm going to open Flash. Now here I am in a new Flash ActionScript 3.0 file, and I'm going to highlight my Actions panel so I can place in some code, and boom. Now, here's the function, and watch how much of the syntax that I change. You ready? I change that one word, alert, to trace. And what trace is, is something in ActionScript 3.0 that allows you to debug and get values back. It's kind of like alert in JavaScript, but it's called trace, and it puts uh, values into the output window. And it's really only for developer purposes. Trace, you're not going to... Uh, it's not going to really show up for the end user at all. It's just values that you can get back as the developer. So let's see what we have here. Function, any function, yep. And get time is, works the same exact way, I believe, in ActionScript 3.0. So we shouldn't have any syntax errors and we shouldn't have any problems and we should get a zero back in the trace window. Let's just run it. Press Control, Enter. Look at that. See, we get nothing back because our application is not doing anything yet. But it is running that function, so in the output window in trace, I get a zero. Just like I did in JavaScript. Because the code doesn't have anything going on right now, that's why I get a zero. But when you go ahead and you make a, a loader to get an image from the server in Flash, maybe you want a JPEG, you can time how many milliseconds it takes for that image to get back in and be ready to be displayed. And what you do is... And your function that's going to, or whatever frame where you're going to load the image in, you put this line first. And then after everything's loaded in your on complete event handler for the loader, you put this line here. That'll give you an exact millisecond representation of how long the server call took. All right, so that's how it works. At the beginning of your script, at the start of your functions, you create a date object and use the get time method. Then when your script is finished processing, usually, usually in some event handler you have a function where you can display things to the page or the user after a server call gets done. That's where you put this line of code. And what that does, it has the same thing. It uses the get time method, but it just subtracts the milliseconds from it. And you divide those by a thousand to turn them into seconds, represent them as seconds instead of milliseconds. And that's it.